In this video, I'm going to show you how you can teach yourself calculus without knowing any trigonometry and only having like basic algebra. So you can actually learn calculus with just very little algebra and zero trig. And you can do that by getting a book like this one. This is called Brief Applied Calculus, and this is the one by Beersford and Rocket. And the wonderful thing about a book like this is that it's written for people who don't know any trigonometry. You might say, well, how can you learn calculus without trig? Well, this book is written for a very special target audience. This is typically written for people who are majoring in college in things like accounting or business. Oftentimes, this is used to teach a course called Business Calculus or Concepts of Calculus uh, at the college level. So this is a course that teaches calculus to people who only know basic algebra. This book actually covers quite a bit of calculus. You'll actually be quite impressed, I think, when you see the contents of this book. There are things in this book that are not found in like the calculus book that you might be using if you're taking calculus. So you'll learn like other things. Also, this book covers topics, this little book, from Calc 1, Calc 2, and Calc 3. All of those topics in one book. Now, it does miss some like really major uh, calculus theorems. It doesn't have trig, but it's a really good book for beginners because it's written at a very beginner level. It's much easier to read than the calculus books that are used to teach, you know, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3. Let's take a look inside this super amazing book. This is the table of contents. It starts off with functions, then it goes on to derivatives, talks about all of the standard rules that you would learn in a regular calculus course, like the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule. Uh, talks about non-differentiable functions, gives some really good examples there intuitively of what it means for a function to not be differentiable. Then it gives you some applications, and these are applications that you won't find in a regular calculus book. So you're already you're getting things from this book that a regular math major or a regular engineering major uh, would not have, right? So, and it's weird because you're finding it in a book written for like business majors, which, which I think is awesome. They review the exponential and logarithmic functions and it's really, really basic. I mean, it's so easy to read. And then they give you some applications, uh, looks like to economics. I actually haven't read that. Uh, it's on elasticity of demand. Then it talks about some integration and here you see there are some, uh, some Calc 2 topics down here. Uh, it talks about improper integrals, uh, integration by parts. Those are things you typically learn in Calculus 2. Even it has differential equations. I mean, wow. And then over here, this is where it gets nuts. It has Calculus 3. Look at that. Lagrange multipliers. And a book written for people where you don't need to know trig. So you can learn Calculus 3 without knowing any trig. I mean... What a work of absolute art. I just think it's so cool. It's, it's almost unheard of. You know, you, you, you talk to people uh, on the street, or maybe not on the street, but, you know, about math, you know, and they're in Calc 3. You know, they know trig. But in theory, in theory, you can learn all of this stuff with just algebra. And I think that's just absolutely amazing. This is the section on the product and quotient rules. So it has an entire section on just these two rules. And you see this box. That's how it identifies formulas. And I always thought that this was really nice. It's like, there's the box, it's really clean, and then here's like an intuitive explanation. This is how you think of it. This is how I think about it, right? The derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's the product rule for calculus. And it's just such a clean book. Like, I feel like there's no way you can make it better. <laughs> it's just so clear. The layout is just beautiful. A lot of math books, they're really cluttery because they have pictures and like, Nothing wrong with pictures, but they just have too much on the page. I feel like the authors did a good job uh, in the layout of this book. Let's turn the page just to show you some more stuff. Here's another one. There's the quotient rule. Really well done. See how it's really clean? It's like one box. Boom. There it is. Here's some examples, and they, and they show you some stuff. A word of caution. You know, be careful. You know, here's another example of the quotient rule. So they do a really good job in, in the explanations. One of the biggest things in this book is the intuition it provides. Believe it or not, I feel like this book provides more intuition into in calculus than the other books that are used to teach Calc 1, 2, and 3 at most colleges because of the way it's presented. Like, for example, this picture here uh, talks about continuity, and I still use this picture 
when I teach Calc 1 to my Calc 1 class. I've actually taught from this book uh, a class called Concepts of Calculus, and I've always thought that this is one of the nice things about this book and about this class is how the concepts are introduced. So I, I've borrowed some of the techniques from this book, and I've tried to like incorporate that into the way I explain things because I think that this book is just beautiful in its explanations. Uh, let me show you another really specific example of what this book does. I like this. I like how it does like the sign diagram for the derivative. So it tells you like where the derivative is positive, negative, and zero. If you look at other calculus books, they use pluses and minuses, which I don't think it's as descriptive. So little stuff like that, I think, makes a big difference in helping to learn calculus and understand calculus. Also, um, the book is just, it's just cleaner. Again, I think I mentioned this before, but the layout of the book, the way it reads, it's just cleaner than other calculus books. And I think it's because this book was written for people who just have less math. So the authors were like, okay, we have to try to make this book as easy to read as possible. <laughs> Why can't all books be written that way? I mean, that would just be wonderful. These are some of the exercises. This is the section on, again, the product and quotient rule. And you see you have tons of exercises. So there are no shortage of examples. You'll notice most of them look almost the same. So you get a lot of practice. So if you're one of those people that needs lots of practice, you can get it from this book. Also, as for the answers, this one has answers to only the odd problems. But that's okay, because you have so many problems, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, if you did all of these, like you would just become a calculus god. It is just ridiculous how many exercises are in this book. So, there is no shortage of problems, and there are no shortage of solutions. Even though you only have answers to the odds, there are no shortage of problems. This is just one of the many sections on applications of calculus, and in particular, you won't find these applications in other calculus books. So here you see like applications to uh, finance. You have like uh, profit and revenue uh, problems, where you're trying to maximize profit or or maximize revenue. Um, a little bit different than what you would see uh, in a regular calculus class. Here the book gets much harder. This is optimizing lot size and harvest size. This is much, much harder. This is pretty tough stuff. Um, in fact, I don't even think I have any videos on this. I should make one, but it's probably one of the hardest parts of the course. Uh, I, I think uh, the last time I taught this course, it's been a while, but I think I made this section extra credit uh, for my class. Here it gives you the steps to solve a related rates word problem. So the related rates problems in this book are actually easier than the related rates problems in a regular calculus book. So that's one of the weaknesses. There are more weaknesses too, right? Remember, you're learning calculus without knowing any trig. So there's going to be uh, you know, some give and take. So you do have to give a lot. A lot of the key theorems in calculus are not discussed in this book. So this is just a way for you to actually just like jump into calculus without knowing any tricks. So if you know some basic algebra, you know, you can get this book right now and just, and just start learning calculus. Here you have some Calculus 3 stuff. It's exploring multivariable functions. That's actually where the Calc 3 starts. It starts with, you know, functions of several variables. Whereas if you took a Calc 3 course, you'd probably start with vectors and then from there go to like vector valued functions and then you would start with this. You know, so later into the course, this just jumps into it it's kind of like the middle part, maybe, of a Calc 3 course. And then it goes on, and it jumps into, let me show you, partial derivatives. That's right. So it introduces the notion of partial derivatives in the second section on multivariable calculus, which is really nice because I, I always thought, if you're in Calc 1, you can learn partial derivatives. All you need is someone to show you. And this book uh, does a super good job of explaining it. It even has Lagrange multipliers, which many people even consider it to be an optional Calc 3 topic. I, I always cover it in my class because I think it's beautiful. And I have lots of videos on this too. And it's in this book, which is awesome because again, it's a calculus book uh, with, with no trig. And you can learn you know, things that Calc 3 students are learning. So you can have no trig and learn Calc 3 stuff. Again, it just, it just sounds ridiculous, but it's possible right? with a book like this. This is a book written for people who, who don't have that math background. And I think that's what makes it such a good book. It's written for beginners. 
Again, the book is Brief Applied Calculus, and this is the one by Beersford and Rocket. And again, I highly recommend this book to anyone who's trying to learn some calculus. Even if you're in calculus and you feel like you're having a hard time, maybe this book will help you because you'll get extra practice. It does have answers to the odd problems, and the explanations are really good. Like I said, the intuitive explanations of continuity, the derivative, all those basic things uh, are done really well in this book. Um, so great book. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck and take care.